Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today's tutorial is all about personalizing journals for um, people at work. And specifically, these are journals that were purchased and then decorated with HTV vinyl. These will be going to some wonderful paraprofessionals at our school and a couple of librarians and of course we have a couple of assistant principals. In order to do a project like this, and you can see that we've got a couple of different um, journals here. This one is almost uh, like, a, like a micro suede or a leather. It comes with a pen and then on the inside it has lined pages and you can write the date in the corner. You can bubble what day of the week it is. And of course it has a little bookmark on the inside as well. This is just a really nice journal. And I do have one here that is in brown. And these were just purchased off of Amazon. And it's just a lined leather journal. Okay, so you could get one for um, whoever you needed in different colors. Then we've got a few, and actually I have about, um, I have three different colors. We have a purple, we have a blue, and we do have a really pretty pink. And all of, well, a couple of these say, I'm a librarian, what's your superpower? And then a, a name at the end. These also come with a little bookmark on the inside. They're all lined. I don't know if you could see that. That's kind of bright, but they're all lined pages, which is wonderful, and they're just super sweet. Um, and then they've got this little band here that will help keep it closed. These over here, we have a couple of librarians, a couple of assistant principals, and then these, we've got several. We've got about 12 paraprofessionals that we'd like to honor. And so this one says, I'm a para, what's your superpower? And it's got a sweet little um, arrow design and of course their name in the bottom corner. And so I wanted to show you how we made these. You could also include a magnetic bookmark and I do have a tutorial on these um, on my channel. So you could even match paper to go with your journals and these sweet little magnetic bookmarks, they are so um, easy, they're super easy very inexpensive to make and you could just totally use up a lot of your scrap um, paper that you have lying around. Okay, let me show you exactly what you need for this project. So again, you will need some journals and these were just purchased off of Amazon. So this is Paper Age. It's a lined notebook and this is a five by seven by eight inch book. So it's a really nice size. They're very light. Okay, and they're, they're very easy to hold. They're not bulky. And then this one, probably just, I think it's probably like eight and a, eight and a quarter. It's not for much bigger. And the, these are the leather binder, or leather journals, and they come with a pen. So these were found on Amazon. And then I am going to be using my Cricut Joy today. And I'm going to use the uh, four and a half by 12 inch mat and some HTV vinyl in black. The two that we're gonna do are for gentlemen, so we thought that black would be a little bit better than glitter. <laughs> and of course we have our tools. We've got our weeding tool and scissors, scraper, true control knife, and um, tweezers. So just kind of all of your little tools that you need there. And of course the Cricut Joy. So this will be a fun little project. Let's go ahead and hop into Zine Space and I will show you how these were uh, created and then we'll get them put together. Okay, so here I am in Design Space and I just pulled up the project that I have already worked with and saved, but I'll show you where I got all of the elements. So the first thing that I did, and I'm just gonna move that out of the way. The first thing I did is I went over to Images and I grabbed a square and I went up here to size and I, I unlocked it so that I could change the size to a five by eight. And then I just changed the background color of that 
rectangle just to something light so I could see what I was doing. This represents the cover of the journal. Now this is not going to get cut out at all. This will be hidden before we go to cutting. The next thing I did is I went in and I typed out all of the names that I needed and then I found, uh, well I left the font for the gentleman in Cricut Sans. Okay, and these are actually about 1.35 inches by 0.51 inches in size. And this one is actually just slightly bigger. And it really just kind of depended on the name and the style we were going for. Then I found a really cute font for all of the ladies. And this font is DTC Brown Sugar. And most of them, well, they're at 1.2 inches. Um, in length or you know thereabouts a little bit longer if they had a longer name and 0.65 inches tall so the height really stayed the same for the names but the length changed based on the number of letters in the name so next I went over to images and then I literally searched for what's your superpower and it brought up a whole bunch for me to choose from. So I chose this first one here, what's your superpower? Because I thought that this would be really neat to put I'm a para, and this would be for our gentleman. Then I came down and I chose this one here. It says, I'm a teacher, what's your superpower? And I actually sliced out the word teacher and replaced it with librarian. And then I chose, I'm a para, what's your superpower? So I didn't need a lot of change to each of these graphics. The next thing I looked for was assistant principal. And that one, I, as soon as I saw this, assistant principal, I refer educational rock star. As soon as I saw that, I knew that is what we needed because our assistant principals are truly rock stars in our campus. Okay, so once those were all selected at the bottom here in the queue, I hit add to canvas. Today, I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel because they're already on my canvas. So after that, when I brought them in, I first of all made sure that they were brought to the front just like that. So a range, bring to front, and then I sized them, put them where I wanted to on my little fake panel, and then I did center horizontally. So just I wanted to see what it would look like. And then I took each of the names and I moved them down here. And again, I brought to front and I just looked and saw whether or not I liked the image and how big it was and where it was placed and if any adjustments needed to be made to size, etc. So I am actually going to hide this name because I actually don't need this name anymore. And I'm going to move Para over here. I don't really need that actually. So I actually can't hide that. Okay, the other one that I did was the I'm a para. This is for our gentleman. Again, bringing to front. And for the other para professional, I left it white, and that just represented the silver glitter HTV that I was using. And here we are going to be using black HTV today. So I brought it to the front, and I did select all, arrange, or align, not arrange, center horizontally, and I thought that that was great. And before I actually did that, just to clarify, I did get a text box and I just wrote, I'm a para, placed it in my text, uh, placed the text box here where I wanted it. And then I selected all of it. And I went down to customize down here in the bottom of my layers panel and I hit weld. And that made this one cohesive image. I forgot to mention that. So then I put it on the little, uh, canvas template and then this you you can see that the name and I'm a para are the same font so I thought that was a great match again just brought the name to the front wow that was a little crazy there and placed it where I wanted it and just double checked did I like the placement did I like the font did I just like how everything was arranged 
And so very happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and move these out to the side. And again, everything's in black because I'm going to use HTV in black. Then I grabbed the assistant principal, brought it over, brought it to the front. Okay, took the name, made sure it was able to be seen from the front, and just moved it over here just to double check placement, sizing, etc. And um, really and truly, the leather round journals for the assistant principals are a little bit bigger. However, the space where I was putting them, this actually was a pretty good size, and it ended up being more over here in this corner because they had this, uh, the pocket. So I had to avoid the pocket and the strap. All right, so after I got all of that squared away, I t went to the rectangle and I hid the rectangle because I don't need to cut that out. Before we go to the make screen, I wanted to show you how I changed the I'm a teacher to I'm a librarian. And what I did was simply take a rectangle from the shapes and I placed it over the word teacher. Now before I did any slicing, I did just grab only the image. So I'm actually not grabbing the rectangle. I want just this image here. And I do need to weld the entire thing together because I need this to be one image that is recognized by the design space. Then I have my teacher, I mean, covered with the little rectangle, selected all, and I went to slice down in my layers panel. And then I was able to move this out of the way, and you can see that I now have a space to put the word librarian. I don't remember what font that was, but basically I just grabbed a text box and I brought it over here and I centered it horizontally. It would be really nice if my mouse would cooperate today. <laughs> so I centered it horizontally and I looked and made sure that I did like the spacing. And then I just changed the word to librarian. And it would help if I could spell. It has been a day. Can you tell? Librarian. Let's see. I think I used the clean kitchen. Um, that is close enough. So you just select a font that you like. And then you can resize it based on what you are looking for. And I tried to just keep it vertically between this line and what's your. And then I did a, a select all and align and center horizontally. Okay, so that is how I made this image here. And the white just represents the fact that I was cutting that on glitter HTV. All right, so I don't need any of these. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those. And I'm going to hide this one because I made the librarians yesterday. So the only thing I have to make today are the two for the gentleman. So one is a Priera and one is the assistant principal. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to make and it will populate. And again, for this short little project, I'm just using my Cricut Joy instead of my Maker 3. Okay, so then you get this screen. I do need to tell the design space that I'm using a four and a half by 12 inch mat. So I'm going to change that. I do need to turn the mirror on because we are going to use the HTV. And then I am going to space everything out. So I need to give some space. I am okay with where this assistant principal is sitting up here. And the I'm a para, I'm just gonna move that down a little bit. And then the two names. I think the names can just literally just be on the same row and just one on either side of the mat. Okay, so then we hit customize. Oh, again, make sure your mirror is on because we are using HTV. When I hit customize, it is going to connect to my joy. 
And on the main screen, when you have your project, you can always tell it what machine you're using. So if you're using a maker or the air, um, you can choose your machine. Um, yesterday I had used glitter HDB. So I literally just typed the word glitter. Okay. And glitter iron came up, glitter and iron on selected that. All right, and I did bookmark it. So I currently only have the glitter iron on bookmarked for my joy. joy. Um, you will probably have something that looks like this where the uh, popular ones are already in there for you. All right, so I'm gonna click on glitter iron on. It is going to give me a warning to make sure that the mirror is turned on and that my iron on material is face down. So the shiny side needs to touch the mat and the more dull side needs to face up toward me. Then I'm going to go and hit more. All right, and then I've got my fine point blade loaded. So something I just realized is that I actually need to change from glitter iron on to regular iron on because we're just using basic black. So I'm actually gonna go over here, I don't see it uh, I'm not using smart iron on. Let me go back to browse on materials and I'm literally gonna just type iron and I have everyday iron on for these two. Yesterday, everything was done in the glitter. So I'll go back here. Now I've changed it to the correct setting. Everyday iron on, more pressure. You could leave it at default. Um, in fact, I did default yesterday for the glitter and it actually was okay. So I think I'll just leave that. And then it's going to ask me to load my mat into the machine. And then it will ask me to click on go when it's all loaded. So we can just go over to the overhead camera and get all of that ready. This is the Cricut Joy four and a half by 12 inch grip mat. This is a light grip actually. And something that I have done for my Joy mats that I just got is I took a piece of washi tape and I just placed it along the top so that I know which side would need to go back down. Um, I actually did a video on using vinyl and creating a design for my large mats for my Maker 3. And that's also a very short, sweet, easy project. But basically, I'm going to remove the, the cover sheet. And then this is the vinyl. So it might be hard for you to see, but this side is actually the dull side. And then when I flip it over, it's super glossy and black. It's just really nice. So I'm going to take my vinyl and I'm going to place it on the mat so that the shiny side is down. And I actually want to make sure that I line it up along this edge. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my brayer. Sorry, I thought I had that out. And I'm just going to go over the vinyl, make sure it is fully adhered down onto the mat. Okay. And the cool thing about the Joy is that it works um, wirelessly. So it's Bluetooth to my computer. And you can see that it's ready and waiting for the material. This is the fine point bleed. So as soon as I put this into the machine, it will take the mat, pull it all the way through, and double check that we have enough material and that it's ready to go. Okay, so now that everything is done, I'll just hit unload and we'll go back to the overhead camera and we will get these put together. Okay, so I have my Easy Press Mini. This is actually going to be set on the low setting and it, you can see that it's already ready. And each time that we um, press the vinyl, we're going to go for about 30 seconds, constant movement. Um, and I would say medium firm pressure. It doesn't have to be super hard, but because um, we also want to don't want to burn the books either. But um, so this is ready to go. And then the next thing will be to weed our images. This cut out beautifully. I don't know if you can tell, but 
just everything is cut out so nicely. I'm very, very pleased with that. So I'm going to close the joy and move it out of the way. When I take the material off of my mat, I do want to bend the mat away from my material. And I'll set that aside. Actually, just kidding. I'm not going to set it aside. I'm going to replace this back on. I like to try and keep my mats as clean as possible. And so I have found that the best way for me to do that is to literally put um, the carrier, the cover sheet back on immediately. And that way, for me, in my house, these stay a whole lot cleaner. Now I can set it aside. The other thing that I am going to do is I'm going to cut these items apart so that I can weave them a lot easier. And I'm just going to go straight across. This will also allow me to save vinyl um, for future projects. That is definitely something that I like to do. And I have found that even the tiniest piece of vinyl can be saved and used for another project. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one. I will tell you that the glitter HTV last night, and it could have been my lighting, but it just seemed a little bit um, difficult. It's a little bit like I couldn't see any cut lines. These I can see the cut lines, but it did weed pretty nicely. And I would just caution that if you have a super intricate design, like that small one that I showed you, that um, that you make sure that you make the size bigger. Had I realized how tiny the What's Your Superpower was going to turn into, I would have definitely made the image a little bit bigger so that the weeding was a little smoother, but it actually did pretty good. So, all right. Put that in our little scrap bin. Okay. All right. So I am going to need parchment paper so that I can protect the book. And this one is going to be the super hero looking one. And another thing that I did yesterday is I wanted to make sure that I did not overheat the books. So I would place my part, I placed, I placed my design down. Okay. And this shiny side is the, the transfer sheet, the carrier sheet. And then I put the parchment paper and go, I went ahead and started to press that. And then about halfway through, I added this because I didn't want to overheat the surface of the book. So this was, after a couple in, I had enough to um, kind of make myself like a big protective sheet. You could also use just more butcher paper, and um, that would be that would be fine too. So I'll just kind of keep that right there. It worked beautifully, and the books came out just nicely. Okay, so speaking of teacher appreciation. Well, I'm curious to know what um, ideas you think are good for teacher appreciation gifts. So I'm thinking that I will probably make like a personalized notepad, you know, the kind where, it, where you tear off the pages. Um, so I've learned how to make those. Look how nice that weeded. That was so nice. And I have one tiny little middle to take out. Um, so I was thinking a notebook, a keychain, a um, not real sure. I need another day. So if you have any ideas for teacher appreciation gifts, that would be awesome. But the last two days, I want to do a... Um, project that's actually a two-day project so it'll be an infusible ink coaster and then the 
next day they would get an infusible ink mug and we would put a little Starbucks gift card in it. So I thought that would be great. So Friday and Thursday, we've got mugs on Friday, coaster on Thursday, and then I've just got a, I've got the, I've got the notebook, I'm sorry, not the notebook, the notepad for one day, a keychain for one day, and um, I could do a small personalized little canvas bag and that would be okay. You know, teachers have lots of pens. Um, I, in my little teacher bag, have pens and a protractor and a compass. And then I have, an, I have another little supply bag, you know, like the little um, pencil bags. And I use that for transporting my, my Cricut tools when I need to move from one place to another. So... All right, let's go ahead and get these weeded out. got all of those weeded and I these tiny little um, pieces from the vinyl they really liked to just kind of hang around so I just grabbed my lint roller really fast and ran that I always like to make sure okay so that's good I always like to make sure to look at what I'm putting down and making sure that it's all weeded correctly. Okay, so there's Kevin. And I'm a para, what's your superpower? So I'm literally going to decide where I want this. And oh, I see a tiny little, super tiny little piece of vinyl that we got to get off of here. That is another thing is to really look at your project and make sure you don't have any little stray pieces like this super microscopic one. Okay, I think that looks great. That actually looks pretty, pretty centered actually. And about an inch there and about an inch. Wow, that is really good. Okay, so then I'm gonna lay down my parchment paper and grab my timer and get that going. Okay, and then I'm literally going to, I'm gonna use medium firm pressure and I'm going to use continuous movement and about, oh, I don't know, a third to a half of the way through. Then I added this. Just, I'm really nervous about making the front cover of these books way too hot. So again, it's on low. Okay, so here is one. Whoop, there we go. All right, and then this is warm, like pretty warm to the touch. So I'm just going to set this aside and let that cool completely. And then we have our next one for our assistant principal. Oh, before, just kidding. Before we do that, I do need to do the name. All right. I guess I got way too excited right there. Okay. All right. So now this is all done, and I'm going to set it aside so cool. Okay. 
and then so I just recently bought this true control knife and I was like well I don't get a big deal but I will tell you this is an amazing craft knife way better than my regular um, you know what regular exacto knife this is wow seriously a game changer I love this so if you don't have one of these um, definitely I encourage you to get one and it's just the Cricut brand okay so now All right. Making sure it's level. Okay, that looks better. We're going to start with the name first this time so that I don't. forget to do that and you could actually use a regular iron um, I used a regular iron for the longest time after I got my maker and then this was on sale one day actually I think we got this on sale at Walmart but um, it was on sale and so I thought why not and I actually really like it I love the fact that it has a, a stand and it, it really is the perfect size and it does an amazing job. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool. And then this one, quite easy. I'm going to go ahead and open that. But this will just sit over here. So that looks good. Okay, so. Another timer. So down in the comments, if you have some great ideas for teacher appreciation or secretary appreciation, um, well, just really any kind of appreciation gift for those that work in your schools or even your doctor's offices, etc., cetera, um, definitely drop a little line down in the, in the comments and let us know. Let us know your ideas. I think that is good. Okay, and I'm just going to let that cool for a moment. This will turn itself off if you forget, but otherwise it's just a little button. Okay, in fact, I'm going to leave it on. So I'm hoping that the regular adhesive vinyl or regular HTV vinyl. Um, took the heat a lot better. The glitter, there was just like one or two books where along the edge I had to redo the the press just because, oh, see, this is what I was talking about right here. So sometimes it doesn't like to do the heat completely. So then we'll just repress. I'll have to let that cool. And the name, even the name needs a little repressing. Okay, so let this cool again. And let's check these to see if they need to. Look at that. That is so, oh my gosh, y'all. That just, that looks like it came like that. That is amazing. Okay, let's try this one too. I think this one looks like it's up over here. And just ever so slowly peel up. I will say that these um, leather or faux leather, micro suede leather, like these actually take the HTV really, really nicely. And my other ones here, they do take it super nicely, but I have found that like along the edges, I have to redo it. So 
Oh my word, this is so amazing. I'm thinking I need to make one for my dad and my husband for Father's Day. They're not assistant principals, but I could definitely put something on there. Oh, that is so gorgeous. And it just, it looks so professional, like, you know, like it came like that. Okay, let's try this one again. Hopefully. Yes, Kevin decided to stay in place. Wonderful. And then this edge here. Oh, good. Yep. Yeah, see, it just needed a little extra press time. Perfect. Oh, that looks amazing. Well, wow, this is how our project turned out. I really hope that this was um, inspiring and informative to you, that you can put HTV on just about anything. And um, if you think of some great projects for Teacher Appreciation Week, that would, you know, go ahead and share with our community. But anyway, uh, that is all for today's video. I hope that you have um, enjoyed this video, that it was helpful, and that it was inspiring to you to go out and craft something beautiful every day. And you um, can just really make a difference in people's lives just by giving them something super sweet and small. It doesn't have to be big, but just to let them know that you appreciate them. Okay, well... Until the next video, like and subscribe, and we will see you in our next video. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day, and as always, happy crafting.